Uh, you mentioned Geelong there, and they were, of course, in action on Friday night in Adelaide. Uh, there was one, one bloke in particular that jumped out. Yeah, and I want to ask the panel, like, is he up there as one of the best readers of the play the game's ever seen, or who is in that? Well, we're talking about Tom Stewart. Yeah, Tom Stewart. So where, where, who else can we name in terms of this? I know Scarlett. Scarlett, yeah. But um, I think this guy does it in a different different way. Luke Hodge when he played that, yeah, that drop like, back role. Yeah, so it's hard to know. So he's got more All-Australians to this point of 150 than anyone else has ever done in it's the history of the game. all-Australian every 30 games. Every 30 yeah. games. Just a freakish player. And what happened the other night, like, it's easy to say just go and send a player to Tom Stewart, like Luke Pedler. Luke Pedler was rattled within five, six minutes of the game. Mm. That's how good this guy Tom Stewart is. And so of, just, yeah. on, just on Stuart as well, what, his ability to use the footy yeah, as well. So, so you get someone like Scarlett who's elite in that space but probably doesn't have the damage with his ball use. And he's aggressive, he's got speed, so he, he ticks all the boxes. But oh, oh, hang on. Are you going with this? Well, uh, <laughs> hang on, this is, this is completely separate yeah. to the bombshell what caught my eye, which is coming up. But roll it anyway. This is uh, the volcano. This is an onslaught to what caught my eye. So in a week where you've extended the coach probably prematurely, you didn't need to do that as the Adelaide Football Club, I thought he had one of the worst nights in the coach's box that I've seen for a long time. And just on Tom Stewart, here's Matthew Nix trying to explain the tactics that they went in with. We came in with, with a number of plans. The first one didn't work up until quarter time. Um, he's, there's a reason that he's a highly regarded player. Yeah, take, take him on a little more with the ball in hand and see if we can you know, challenge him from a different direction um, rather than just, I guess, trying to go 1v1. Most people sort of look at the game and go, well, why don't you just put someone on him? Or, you know, some players have a level of footy that you know, even with that attention, are able to impact the game, and I think he's one of those. He showed tonight; he had a he had an outstanding game. But there was there was no attention. There, so the, the, this is the attention that he's talking about. So this is the start with Pedler that Lord I mentioned. That's a bizarre matchup as it is anyway. Ben Keys is a much better matchup. He's got the experience to do it. Now, the attention like he's standing all alone, 40 to 50 metres on his own. Now he took six intercept marks in the first half. You there? Okay. Well, what are they going to do now? What, are they going to put some level of pressure on him? Are they going to put anyone near him. This is the vision. You're, you're watching it. And I'm sitting there at the game going, hang on, surely they're going to do something with Tom Stewart. Now, what's plan B? Well, plan B is to take the ball in a different direction. How about you put some physical pressure on him and actually make him somewhat accountable? Because this happened time and time again, and that's what you got. So, as I said, in, in, a, in a week where you got a contract extension, um, maybe prematurely, that's their next games. They've lost two games to teams that didn't play finals last year, TJ. And I was big on Adelaide coming in, uh, but it's been a really disappointing start. And Matthew Nix and his coaches had a really poor night. It's been a really good start by the, the Cats. St Kilda the previous week, the Crows this week. But uh, problems for Paddy Dangerfield, we believe, given what happened to him with this soft tissue. And you can see him speaking there to the uh, expert in this space, Steve Saunders, just describing what's happened to his left hamstring region. He spoke post-match to Channel 7 and, and didn't give a lot away, but scans have been uh, taken. And we'll get to know at some stage in the next couple of days as to, as to what that means. But given his history, certainly in 2022, Lordo, with, with soft tissue and how they got him right yeah. for the, the proper part of the season, you'd think there might be, or certainly possibility, of a time on the sidelines. We've had a huge amount of injuries, haven't we? And to key players in the first mm. two or three rounds. And you need luck to win a flag, and a lot of sides have, aren't having that at the moment.